Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Testing. I'm Ryan and today we're going to be doing a benchmark 0-100% to charging test. We're going to be looking at the Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive, though this has the same battery as the uh, long range all wheel drive, and just going to see exactly how it charges from 0-100%. to this is one of the most popular electric vehicles on sale, so it'll be great to see how this charges in comparison with a lot of the other vehicles on sale today. Let's go ahead and take a look at this charging curve. We plug in and have a pretty quick ramp up. By the time we're at 3% state of charge, we're at our peak charging speed of 250 kilowatts. That's actually a pretty quick ramp up. It took well under a minute and we're still going. 10% comes in just about 3 minutes. It's still cranking along, but at this point it's already started to taper down just a little bit to 240 kilowatts. We're off our peak charging speeds, and we're slowly going to taper our way down throughout the rest of the charging session. By the time we're 5 minutes in, we're at 20% state of charge, still doing over 200 kilowatts. This is a really good charging speed, but again, we're already seeing it taper, and that part is a bit of a bummer. We'd like it to see it pull for a little bit longer. We're under 200 kilowatts by 27%. For comparison, one of the Model 3's closest competitors is the Hyundai Ioniq 6. That charges at over 220 kilowatts till over 50% state of charge, so a much better charging curve. 10 minutes in, we're at 38% state of charge. Now, I'm going to discuss this a little bit later when we look at the range versus time graph, but in those 10 minutes, we replenished almost 150 miles of real-world range. One great benefit about this Model 3 is its efficiency. It is incredibly efficient. You can easily achieve over 4 miles per kilowatt hour. And that means even though this car is tapering, even though we're seeing speeds only around, what, 110-ish kilowatts? And that's still replenishing range at well over 8 miles per minute. That's still pretty good. 15 minutes in and we reach 50% state of charge. That's a nice neat figure there. We're doing just over 100 kilowatts, which is really starting to slow down quite a bit. So unfortunately, a lot of times when you're on a road trip, you're probably going to be unplugging somewhere around this point, somewhere around 50 to 65-ish percent state of charge. 18 minutes in and we're at 57% state of charge. For reference, the Hyundai Ioniq 6 charges from 10 to 80% in 18 minutes, and we saw that in the real world, so this is lagging quite a bit behind. 20 minutes in, we're at 60% state of charge, and I'm going to go ahead and speed up this video. One thing you should keep in mind if you're charging a Tesla is that the time estimate you see in the top left, it's saying 35 minutes re remaining to get to 100%. Yeah, it's not accurate. Additionally, when we first plugged in, we had a charge limit set to 80% briefly. It said it would take 30 minutes to reach there, but that was also not accurate either. It ended up taking 35 minutes to get to 80%. This time estimate does give you a rough idea, but it's not super accurate, which is a little frustrating, especially when you're just watching the time go by. Like I mentioned, it took about 35 minutes to reach 80% state of charge, and really there's not a lot of reason to stay charging beyond this point, other than a situation where you're, say, eating a meal or basically just trying to kill time because right now we're charging well under 50 kilowatts. It's a really slow charging speed, and I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up again. When we first plugged in, it said it would be about an hour to get from 0 to 100%. In Tesla's defense, we get to 97% in an hour of charging, but that's not 100%. By the time we're at this point, we're charging at basically level 2 charging speeds, 11 kilowatts. There's pretty much no difference between plugging in here versus plugging in into a home charger. This is extremely slow, and basically right now, it's just doing some top balancing, making sure all the cells are at an equal voltage so we can go ahead and get on our way with a true 100% state of charge. That happens just after an hour and a half. Now I'd like to take a look at this charging curve. We're first going to look at kilowatts versus state of charge here. And like we saw, there's a very quick ramp up. We're up to our peak charging speed of 250 kilowatts by 3% state of charge. 
Unfortunately, it does not hold that peak for all that long. And while it does hold 240 kilowatts up until 17% state of charge, it then starts a taper. It's a pretty linear taper from 17 to about 47%. It's also a pretty steep decline, meaning that we're tapering off the peak charging speeds very quickly. We see it start to level out a little bit, taper a little bit slower once we're above 47%, and then it walks its way back down as we get closer toward 100% state of charge. Now let's take a look at how this compares to a bunch of other sedans. And here we go. We can see the 250 kilowatt peak is pretty average. It's right in the middle. There are definitely some vehicles that charge better and faster. There's also vehicles that charge slower. One thing we can really see is this steep taper. Once we're above 30% state of charge, this is the worst charging new sedan that we've tested, at least when it comes to kilowatts. An interesting comparison is the Tesla Model S Plaid. That Plaid is able to hold the same peak, 250 kilowatts, until over 30% state of charge. It's generally about 20 to 40 kilowatts faster throughout most of the charging curve. It's worth mentioning that the Plaid does have a considerably larger battery, and this larger battery gives it a relative advantage in this test. It's easier for a big battery to maintain higher charging speeds. However, the Model 3 is still not a very great charging vehicle because its competitor, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, has a smaller battery yet manages to charge better for most of the charging session. There's really a huge dif difference once you get above 20% state of charge. There are, of course, a lot of factors that go into this, but it does not change the fact that this new Model 3 is really not a super great charging sedan, at least when looking at the competition. Next, I want to move on to my favorite graph, and that's our range versus time graph. I think this is our most important graph because it shows you what happens out in the real world. It combines both charging speed and efficiency to show you how long it would take to go any given distance for any of these vehicles that we've tested. Now, we just finished talking about how this charging curve of the Model 3 is really not very impressive. It's actually the worst charging sedan that we've tested, so you might expect to see this new Model 3 at the bottom of this chart as well, doing very poorly, but that's just not the case. It actually does extremely well. We can see that the Lucid Air and Porsche Taycan are just in their own league. However, the new Tesla Model 3 is actually almost identical to the old Tesla Model S Plaid. The new Model 3 is a little bit faster in the first few minutes, and then the Plaid catches up a little bit later, but really it's neck and neck for most of the charging curve. It's worth mentioning the Tesla Model S long range would be a bit more of a direct comparison, and that would be a little bit better performing in this test. However, this is still charging really quite well. In 10 minutes, we replenished enough energy to go 147 miles at 70 miles an hour. It took just 16 minutes to replenish 200 miles of range, and replenishing 300 miles of range took just over 32 minutes. That part is particularly impressive. The Mercedes EQS sedan is a much bigger, much more expensive vehicle, and it's able to catch up after half an hour of charging, but I'm still comfortable saying this Model 3 is better charging than the EQS. Additionally, the Model 3 is better charging than the Hyundai Ioniq 6, one of its most direct competitors across the entire charging session. Despite the Hyundai having an incredible charging curve, the efficiency and range are not as impressive, leading to a worse performance. I really like these results because they highlight the importance of this chart. We just saw that, objectively speaking, this was the worst charging EV sedan that we've tested. It does not have a very good charging curve, it only holds the peak charging speed for a short period of time, and the taper is quite aggressive. Despite this, the incredible efficiency is able to make up for it, and we're left with a very good charging EV. This is something that we've also seen in our 10% challenge. The Model 3 long range does quite well in this as well, and this is a prime example demonstrating how efficiency can really make up for relatively weak charging. It's a great example showing the importance of this chart because it's combining both the charging speed and efficiency. I'm quite glad to finally add this Model 3 to our charging test. Surprisingly, we did not have a Model 3 on our charging test before this, so it's really great to have this as a point of reference. That's pretty much all I have for you on this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.
Thank you.